so welcome, um, Dina, and to my broadcast on unusual conversations on mental health and happiness and on finding your own happy. And I talked to Dina uh, recently after not talking with her for quite some time. We had a catch up call, but Dina and I worked together. Oh, no. Was that like 2015? Yeah. Okay. So back in 2015. So it's been quite a while. And my work has evolved and shifted since then. But we wanted to just have a little, Dina has made a few comments here and there about how my work has benefited her life and yeah. the value that she's received from it. And so I just wanted to bring her on and have a little conversation about some of some of that journey and also where she is now, what she's up to, things like that, just to share with the audience what this journey can be like and um, the perspective of, of being on the journey toward the wholeness and happiness and finding your own happy. So yeah. um, anything else you want to add by way of introduction, Dina? Um, no, I mean, I just, I think that's the, the basics of the introduction. You know, you came into my, I think part of the, the journey is trusting the people that come into your life at certain points. And, you know, when they show up, um, get, you have the opportunity to say yes, you know, mm-hmm. when, and, you know, in these places where there's like a s- sense of transformation. I remember I was so hesitant to work with you at first. And then yeah, I, I do remember that actually, there was a the trust factor that we had to overcome and yeah. just some fears around what it would mean or feeling safe or, um, which is a big I, thing. I think you're all revealing of this, your soul. <laughs> yeah. When you're trying to, you know, you're trained not to listen to your soul. So, <laughs> you know, it's easy to say no and come up with excuses. So I, I remember like at the beginning of our work being like, I don't know, let me make excuses about this. Let me make excuses about that. And I think what that was is a real sense of like the fear of transformation, the fear that this is going to open me to an unknown. And, and it did, it absolutely did. But had I not said yes to it, I would have been saying like no to really an incredible amount of like latent potential that I was sitting on within my own being that opened up, um, from, you know, I, you have a unique way of working and especially for people who are, you know, empaths, sensitives, um, who experience in the world in a, I would say, you know, a very felt and alive way, um, that maybe struggle, um, with, I don't know, the, you have a way of connecting, helping people tap into their intuition. I was like deeply cut off from my intuition and Mm. by you, like really embodying intuition, um, it really helped me to tap into my own. So that was major. Well, you bring up such an interesting point about that resistance and how, like I've seen that a lot and I've actually seen it recently, how we say we want change, we say we want to create something different with our lives, and then we come up with all of the excuses. And um, (laughs) yeah, so what, what excuses are you making toward finding you're unhappy to creating real change in your life. What are you scared of that keeps you from really going for those big changes? Right. Or, you know, you say, I mean, I had a, a client um, that I've been working with for a while now, but she like, she kept postponing our initial call. And finally I said, look, if you want to do this, let's do it. If Should you don't, <laughs> if, yeah, exactly. If, if now is not the time, I'm happy to get back to you. But, you know, sometimes there's always something else that comes before you and your own well-being, your own happiness. There's always other things that you're putting ahead. So if you notice yourself constantly, like, now is not the time I'm making excuses, et cetera, et cetera, you might want to look at that. You might want to examine that and say, like, okay, so what am I so afraid of? And, like, what does it take for me to prioritize myself? Because that's a thing I see a lot, too, is and then people don't. And like when you do prioritize your own transformation, all those other people that you are supposedly serving and putting ahead of you, they join, they, they are the, they benefit from your transformation. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. So like we think sometimes like there's a, an issue around being a martyr, right? That a lot of us have or caretaker or, or putting other people Um, before ourselves, serving other people before we tend to our own selves. 
Yeah. Um, and that often, you know, we think it's like being selfless, selfish and selfless, excuse me. And this is something I actually write about in my book that, and that's- Hold, hold on a second. I have like multiple. Okay. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm still with you. Okay. It was like, my, I got double videos, like a video of- Okay. Yeah, going at the same it, time. It did I say wants to join. I was like, "What?" Um, but basically, this stuff like when we, I have coached so many of my clients to say, um, are afraid of being selfish, right? And being a selfish person, putting yeah. yourself first is not selfish. And no. I write about this in the book. It's like when you don't put yourself first, when you're giving to everybody else at your own expense, it costs you. And if you think about it, like how enjoyable is it to receive from somebody who is doing it out of a sense of duty and obligation and not out of sense of happiness and joy. And like, right. they're receiving you the whole time they're doing it, and but you feel like I have to do it and I have to, and really you just burn yourself out. And so I give you all at this moment permission to take a little bit more care of yourself and put yourself a little bit more first and to say no to people. Another thing I said in the book is you can't save someone else if it's sinking your own ship. Oh. And that's a big lesson that I've had to learn, and I think a lot of us have to learn, is like, if you're going down with somebody else, it's not serving either of you. Um, no. So to do that, that, self, that self-care thing. Um, and then the other thing you're tapping into, which I, I really love, is about trusting yourself and your own intuitive sense of things. Can you say a little bit more about how that showed up for in, in your life since we've worked together? Um, well, you know, I was blocking a lot in me. You know, I was blocking, you know, I, the, the healer in me, right? I was blocking my own medicine, you know, my own ability to, to trust the moment and the way in which I communicate with the world and the universe communicates with me, right? Those were skills that I had not tapped into. Um, and, you know, I just think that you certainly open that to me. You know, I always go back to like, you know, why I love working with you versus, you know, someone you can end up doing talk therapy with for like ever who likes make you stew in the problem is just like, you know, the tech, you know, the techniques that you use, like tap you into like, what's that belief? Like, what's the fundamental belief? And you get to it really quickly. And, you know, so much when I was working with you, I was going through, a, you know, I was going through an initiation process. You were one, I was working with another teacher, but you were someone who was like really getting to the, you know, what is that fundamental belief upon which a lot of lies were built off of, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'll always remember this, you know, we, you got down to the mistake where I made my husband the source of my good, like, and mm -hmm. we like literally crossed that out. We went like, it went from Joe is the source of my good to God is the source of my good. And mm -hmm. holy shit. I mean, it tapped me into source, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, on the fundamental level of source, which I had, you know, been cut off from, right? When you are someone who's seeking external validation, whether it's in a romantic relationship, a, a job or anything, you know, who you are is based off of who you're with, you know? And I think as an empath and someone who can kind of get into this mirroring dance with someone, you know, it's, that's a dangerous place. You know, you want to make sure that you're tapped, you are looking in a divine mirror. <laughs> and I think, you know, that was a major, I, I totally, Mm. That was a really pivotal moment for you to basically tap back into yourself as the source of your good, the source of your life, the creator of what you desire, and to almost like reclaim your yeah. power. And in this case, it was your husband, but reclaim your power from those external factors and say, there is something much larger here that yeah. I get to achieve my good from. And, um, 
And I'm just thinking about how that's connected to finding your own happiness, right? When we put our happiness outside of ourselves, yeah. we put the source of our happiness about, you know, how our husband is responding to us or, or somebody in our life or all of these other external factors, they're going to shift and change all the time. Right. And when you really anchor and you want people to have things, yeah, when you anchor it into something greater of like, I am the one that gets to create my good. I'm the one that gets to determine my life. There's a, there's a power there for sure. And not to say yeah. like, I also talk about in the book, how context and conditions matter. And like, if you're in an environment and with a person that is not honoring you or doesn't feel good for you, et cetera, right. then by all means change it. It's not like, or oh, like I dinner your time. So there are people who are, are, you know, I remember another moment that we had together, you know, I, I remember once in the resistance part, like, I remember I had a dream, like, you were going to kill me. Like, this was like dream, right? And on like a psyche level, right? It was a death. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was afraid of dying, of letting this old, worn, too small identity die. And so in a way, right, it was this by you coming into my life, there was a, a killing off of an identity that like was no longer serving who I was, you know, it was, you know, when you outgrow a pair of shoes, you buy a new pair, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. and I, that's what was going on in my life. I was trying to box myself into something that wasn't natural for me. And, and that is a death. And like, I think so many people, you know, are struggling from depression and things like that because they're not allowing the cycles of death and birth to happen in their lives. And like, what are you trying to make or forcing to make work in your life that really isn't? What are you it's holding tough. on to? Um, I had this um, this thought recently. Well, I've had it a few different times. Is sometimes in order to achieve what you desire or to achieve greater happiness, you actually have to let go of the things that you've decided are right or that are working in your life or that are good in your life. Because then you, you get so attached to this version, like, oh, but I have to hold on to this one little thing that is good, and you're missing a whole bunch of other good in your life. Mm -hmm. Or, or um, you know, for me, a sign of depression, an indicator of depression is that I am trying to fit myself into a box, into a condition, into a relationship, into a situation that doesn't actually fit for me. So I'm cutting off some piece of myself trying to put myself in a, a space that doesn't fit and then I'm depressed and I wonder why um, yeah that could be part of why and so like what if you really are willing to listen and to have all of you in that conversation and in life and a question that I ask that might be helpful for anyone listening is um, what am I what am I avoiding seeing here or what do I want not want to see here that if I were to see it, I would have more choice, more access to myself, more possibility. Um, or if things are getting hard, it's like, what am I avoiding? What do I not? Right. So sounds like that. That's, that's an important question. As soon as we are able to just look at, look at the things, you know, as soon as we're able to just see it, like we take the power, mm -hmm. you know, we have power over it then, you know, but the avoidance game is, <laughs> it's going to, well, you're if gonna, you're gonna, think, it's going to keep at you until you look at it. And here's the thing that you're touching on that I think is so important because in my industry of personal development, self-help, all that kind of stuff, there's kind of a story that I see painted a lot about how beautiful and like, you know, oh, I just got everything my, I wanted and my life is like amazing and it just transformed oh. it. And, and actually really like, the journey of personal development, transformation of finding your own happiness is actually sometimes quite frightening and terrifying and challenging. And it's like you oh, do. Oh, you're breaking up a little a bit on me. Oh, it's that taking a risk, it's stepping up to something greater and it can feel like you're losing yourself. You're losing your entire identity. And yet on the yeah. other side of that is something so much greater and and you and you have like i just think that's part of the journey like mm -hmm. you you don't tap into the real fullness essence right this divine right divine essence of being until like 
you do like an identity crisis is an important part of the human journey. You know, <laughs> you have to just fall absolutely apart, you know, and, and a lot of my journey, you know, that happened. I mean, it went, if people want to go deep, <laughs> you have to be willing to lose your mind to like find your heart, you know, yeah. and, and that okay, happens, Sarah, right? Guys, if you're looking for the easy, um, Oh no. You know, fluff, fluff version of finding your unhappy. Um, that's not really what it, you're going to find here. And yet the process and the journey is so rewarding and so rich and so deep and will bring you to a much greater piece of happiness, sanity, and um, peace in yourself. But you yeah. know, there's going to be, there's going to be some challenges along the way, stretching and growing. It's like, there it's not fun. Growth. It's like, right? oh, that hurts. I don't want to grow this way. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, I think now it's, you know, everyone's like crushing their goals and like, this is my morning routine and blah, 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 blah. But like, you know, I think that's an aspect of finding your own happy, you know, but still like mm -hmm. happiness is not an external thing. You know, I don't care to be happy. I like joy to me, like there's happiness and there's joy and like, Sometimes I think people associate happiness with circumstance. Like ha I'm happy because like the job is cool and I got a, a great relationship and you know, I am have my life well balanced, you know? But to me, there's also like joy is a little different. Joy to me is like finding joy in the muck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. can you be and joyful me, when your identity is falling apart? Yeah, thank you so much for bringing up that idea of happiness because it's something that I've struggled with and I've struggled with being this you know happiness happiness coach because the version of happiness that I think so many people are sort of attaching themselves to or identifying with is bubbly outgoing big smile on your face exuberance and actually what I mean by happy and finding your own happy is this place of congruency in your life this place mm. of peace with where you are and who you are where you don't feel crazy you don't under wonder what what's wrong with you you're not right. bogged down by a huge weight of heaviness all of the time but in my view of happiness so there's like the emotion of happiness which is sort of this fleeting thing right and it comes and goes naturally in life and sometimes it makes sense. Like there are things in your life that you're not going to be happy about. Like I lost my grandmother. You're not going to prefer year. like a preference, you know? Yeah. You I lost know? my grandmother last year. And that of course is not a happy experience for me. I'm grieving. And yet I can still access that sense of happiness in that sense of like the rightness of it or the um, congruency with my being. There's not like this inner conflict inside myself and this inner confusion about who I am and what's happening in my life. And so really, right. in some way, when I talk about happiness, I'm actually talking about a sense of inner peace. Um, yeah. I, I, can I, have tears, when I can have tears streaming down my face and still access that sort of more fundamental baseline experience of happiness versus other times I'm really in turmoil when I'm crying. And that's a very different experience. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah, well, just happy is like, I think just happiness really stems from seeing the reality of every moment as it is, you know, like here I am struggling. You know, and congruency, I the am, killing yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like I, I, it's especially in this, you know, and now everyone is so happy and everyone's got to get their shit together and everyone's crushing, you know, this like live your best life. Mm -hmm. you know, pressure in the world. It could be a huge amount of pressure. I think it's, and, you know, I was joking, but I'm like, I'm pretty cool with like living a solidly mediocre, you know, why do I have to live my best life? Leave me alone. Like, let me live a solidly mediocre and stop like, it, why does it have to be, you know, and that's, I just think that's like the American, you know. There, well, actually, like I the was- Capitalistic radio, version of happiness. That. They're talking about the extreme level of pressure, especially like high school students have on themselves to achieve and and the lack of measuring up and also the rate the high rates of suicide suicide rates have gone up a lot which actually that's another thing i'm wanting to talk about not in this call but in another yeah. call is sort of 
um, suicidality and what are some of the things that are underneath that? And one of them, I think, is this extreme amount of pressure. Social media certainly does that. People put their best face forward on social media. Then you compare yourselves. You think, wow, I'm not measuring up. My life is not amazing as everybody else's. What's wrong with me? Life is not always amazing, folks. Like yeah. as much as anybody wants to make you think it is, like part of the journey of life and part of the journey of wholeness and happiness is to be able to go through the parts with grace and with um, confidence and uh, and with the tools to like go through the hard stuff in life because yeah, there are seasons, you know right? You, but no, life, season. life is not all just roses and anybody who tells you otherwise is missing the thorns like truly but there is a way to face those challenges to face whatever is showing up in your life hardships people I was just thinking about um someone here uh there was a man here that I knew who died in a car crash he had it left a a young um son and wife behind oh. and like life is so not fair he was such a beautiful human and yet that happened and yeah. so that's not something that you have control over, but you can have the tools and you can have the skills to move through those kinds of experiences in life so they don't crush you, they don't undermine you, and you can I mean, navigate the life with the thing is grace. What's that? I think the key word that you said is grace, right? Is just to, you know, and that's the, for me, like, I, I go a lot, you know, what, helps me traverse right is this whole god thing whatever you want to call it but like it's that grace that comes in these moments of suffering or moments of you know yeah that there is just this you can that's always available to you like and that that to me is like that's the good news <laughs> yeah, and so for anybody watching if you have any comments or thoughts that you want to add into this conversation please just add them in the chat. We'd be happy to speak to anything that you have a question, anything you want to add to the conversation. We'd love to hear from you um, on this journey. And yeah, so like, what does it take to get to that state of grace, to be in that state of grace? And, and one of the things that I've discovered, having struggled so much in my life and been in so much constant sort of conflict and inner turmoil is that the tools of self-understanding, making peace with yourself, knowing how to navigate your own journey um, in a way that you understand what all of the emotional content is that's showing up for you. What is all that heaviness? What is all of the, um, what is your depression telling you that might make a true and lasting difference for you? And and so that's some of what I write about and I teach in my book, Finding Your Own Happy, is how to really understand your emotional journey in a different way. And especially as Dina was saying, if you are an empathic or sensitive person, can be really confusing. Feeling. But, yeah, it's like if you feel a lot and you just don't even know what is what, you might want to read some of what I write because that has been huge for me. And and starting to be able to decipher what's really going on for me, what I have a point of view that everything that shows up in my life is inter information I can use to my advantage. And I love I, that's a great perspective to have. Like, and what if is I learn how to interpret just information? And yeah, just information. If I learn how to understand and interpret that information, it can be contribution to me. It can be a gift to me. So even my depression, even my suicidality, like it had information for me that when I learned how to use it and work with it, it made a real and lasting difference in my life. And so that's a perspective also to take on, like, what is this showing me? What is this telling me? And the more that you can yeah. listen and really understand yourself, the more sort of, I think, grace that you have in your life. Um, yeah. I, I, looking at it really, I mean, as information, it's funny because, you know, I miss like feelings and miss emotion, but taking these more objective, you know, like, huh, I'm just observing this like a scientist, you know what I mean? Like, how interesting, you know, those like little, those little phrases are really important. Like, how interesting this is happening, you know, and without having to go super deep, you know, or um, uh, some of the uh, other things that have been like helpful in my own life, you know, there's different 
spirituality and religious traditions that I've dabbled in, but like almost looking at your thoughts as like spirits visiting you. You know what I mean? Like, ah, is this like, what is this telling me? What is it, what is it reflecting in me? Or is that even my, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. you know what? I yeah. panic you. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? mean? It's, so it's a great way yeah. for me to look at my own thoughts and be like, you know, I'm not inviting that, that thought into my life and like, you know, <laughs> be gone. <laughs> Which brings up such another interesting point that we've talked about and that I work with in the book as well is like, not everything that shows up in your mind, ha it has its origin with you. Like, yeah. who's, whose thoughts are you picking up on? Or like, whose thoughts have you internalized? Did your mother tell you horrible things about yourself? Right. Or right. even, even well-intentioned things that people sometimes say you internalize in, a, in an interesting way. And like, what is that? And so to, to say, if a thought shows up, no, to not necessarily believe it right away, to have right. some curiosity and question into it. I think that's important. And then also just like, I mean, you can have fun with your inner world and the voices in your head. You know what I mean? Like, who are these characters that show up? Like, you know, my Debbie Downer, like, and not associating, right? Like, if you can characterize these aspects of yourself, Mm -hmm. right then they're not you then there's like that still basis of yeah your units yeah. that is mm -hmm. you know universal and your place of being where all these like little visitors you know you can then have a relationship with <laughs> um, absolutely yeah you know I, I don't know maybe some people have less complicated inner worlds <laughs> or not or less characters in their in their in their insides but you know to me the more that i can um you know, it's like the roomy guest house, you know, poem. Do you know that poem? You know, mm -hmm. like your feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, I can, you can look at those, those feelings, thoughts, um, voices, you know, as different characters, you know, um, and then relate to them differently. Mm -hmm. And so making space for basically making space for all of you and all yeah. your, and if nothing is wrong, if everything is just information you can use to your advantage, then there's no reason to, to, um, to be scared of what shows up. Right. And like looking at his information and just really like, we need to take ourselves less seriously. <laughs> we have to take our thoughts less seriously. It's like, Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> no big deal. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's, we make a big deal about too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, well, um, Anything but else you want to comment? You made an important comment, and you know about achievement, and you know so much. Even in this, my being, it's been interesting because I'm, you know, I am trying to uh, do things and achieve certain goals. But there's been a part of my being that has been like very resistant to goals and going mm -hmm. after them in these measured ways. And I think part of that is resistance, right? Maybe fear of success in some ways, but. I think there's this other part that's like in this world of achievement goals, like I think we can understand that those are human things that we need to do, but like the universe, God, whatever, like is not achievement oriented. You know what I mean? Like it's well, and how many people um, go after certain things that they think are going to make them happy, achieve happiness. I remember I was reading some book about money, right? And like, you think, oh, if I have this much amount of money, then life is going to be great. And, and that the opposite for some people is the opposite was true because now they have all this money and now they're living in the constant fear of losing it. Yeah. And so really, yes, there are conditions and circumstances and, and accomplishments in our lives that can add value and add meaning and, and contribute to our happiness. But ultimately you know what, you get to define what happiness looks like for you and what success looks like for you. And um, so much, there's so much of flaunting external success going on in social yeah. media and in, in the world right now. And really for me, it's like, I reclaim what success looks like for me. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, like how anybody yeah. else judges it. Like I am making peace with myself and my own being. And it's going to look very different for me than it is for someone else. And it might not look worldly, but when yeah. I have 
peace with myself and my process and also the permission to be in my process that other people might judge. Like I'll spend a day in bed just for example. And I know like when I let go of everybody else's judgment and everybody else's story about how the wrongness, all of all of that, it's like, I know I am doing something healing for myself right now and it is working for me. And I don't care if other people out think it's have a judgment on it. It's what I need to do for myself. And that's really the success. So I invite anybody who's watching this to find success for yourself. What makes you truly happy? What is truly fulfilling to you? And start to examine all of the lies, all of the stories, all of the realities that you've bought about what it means to be successful. Are you chasing other people's success? Are you chasing other people's happiness? Or might you be happy or feel successful with something very different than what you've maybe defined or chasing after or trying to achieve that I'm one of my another teacher one of my favorite things she ever said is like and it's so true because I've often like she's like stop drowning in your own sense of ambition yeah. she's like who said who made the bar so high it's like you created this this ambitious thing and like you don't need to do that Right. It's a great to have ambition and great to have vision, but when you use it as a way to um, sort of make it that you've failed or that you haven't measured up, then like, man, like, is that really where your value comes from? Or does the value come from the presence in your being and the way that you carry yourself in the world, the sense of peace that you have in every moment that you show up? Because who knows, you could lose it all tomorrow. Exactly. Um, whatever that is. And so there's a, a different factor at play. Like I got such joy last night of, of putting my friend who's four to bed. Like that, that's not an ambition. That is like a lived experience of the moment. Like pure, yeah. I have succeeded because I have this love of a child in my life that is irreplaceable. And yeah. what, okay. And what if every moment is a choice toward achievement and success and like, not some final place of arriving. Right. So there's a myth, right? That you're going to finally arrive. You're going to finally get your life together and everything's going to be great and you're going to be happy. Well, you know what? Yes, things change and, and things might feel better here and now, but. Yeah, but you summit one mountain, then you have to go back down and climb up another one. Like, that's yeah, it. Or like, it's like, there's always like, and I've noticed, I've noticed I've achieved things in my life, but I'm so busy already moving on to the next thing that I want to accomplish that I like, it hasn't really brought me, I've had to stop and remind myself, oh, wait a minute, you accomplished that. Like, yeah. be grateful for five seconds before you're on to the next thing that you have to do that you haven't yet accomplished. But I think that's because there's like a lack of ritual and community around our own accomplishments in the process you know what I mean like if you were in well, you know in community and you got that moment you know what I mean like if you stop and reflect with others because so much to me the reason that we keep going for more and more is the lack of witnessing mm. in the journey well that's an a, that's an I was having that conversation actually last night with someone about this notion I think also in the personal development and self-help is that you should be able to accomplish everything on your own. You should be able to overcome all of your obstacles, all of your challenges. Like, look, I need it. Heroic, like this, this very individualistic journey, but actually. Well, that's like the superhero myth that we've been bought and we need to destroy. Like, you know what I mean? Like my superhero heroine story, it's like, (laughs) she was a wreck. And she was saved by her community. <laughs> that's about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, well, and that's shit so off true. we are evolutionarily designed toward human connection. We are not able actually to survive without other people. Honestly, like we like to yeah. think that maybe we could, but we depend on, we are so interconnected. I had a teacher, a nonviolent communication teacher, and something that she said that really struck with me. She said, never have we been more dependent on each other yeah, and more of illusion of independence. Like that, that's because it's so automated, we don't realize how realize how 
incredibly dependent we are on everyone else in our lives and yet how um how independent we feel versus like a time when people were a lot more self-sufficient they had their own farms etc um so yeah. actually interdependence is so important and having support is so important and, and so like being on this journey toward happiness and like being a coach right it's like there's nothing wrong with needing help from someone else. And even like, I'm really great at helping myself. And there are certain things that I just can't resolve on my own. I need yeah. another, one. I need a witness. I need a support. And, I feel like we, and, and, and just changing it to be like, the more help that I get from others, like the stronger I am. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? like, so, the more help that I get, the more willing that I'm at, able to say like, here's my strength. This is my weakness. I need, can you help me get from here to here? Can you Absolutely. do need this? You know what I mean? Because you're inviting people into relationship then. Yeah. Me. Yeah. So to me, it's like any place that I have a weakness or a place that I, I need growth. It's, it's an invitation to relationship. Invitation to relationships and so support and support asking, being able to ask for support and know when you need support is actually a sign of strength. And we'll take you a lot further on your journey, I think, to finding your own happy. And with that note, actually, I'm going to need to sign off because I have yep. something else coming up. But um, so I'm happy we you, did this. This was cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dina, so much for showing up and so much for being here and being part of this journey with me. And if you're someone who maybe is struggling and seeking support, needing some support, um, I am here for you for sure. Definitely check out my book, Finding Your Own Happy. I highly recommend you as well. <laughs> and, Dina, and, you know, you have a little bit of, of Dina's sort of experience of working with me. And the first step, if, if you're looking for someone to help you to have support, let's have a conversation and see what that could look like and see if I might be the person that, that could help you in that journey. And thank you for watching, everybody who showed up today. And I'll be back next week. I do have another guest. I believe I'm going to be talking to the author of so Kate LeBroth, the author of This Is Me, Bipolar Free. And she's okay. talking about her journey of uh, overcoming her bipolar diagnosis and being uh, finding her own happy, essentially. So we'll be having that conversation next week. Um, thank you so much. Um, and yeah. Dina, we're going to have to have a, another time when LaBanfa can come on and Oh, and yeah. I'll have to tell you. got to tell you all about her. Uh, that, that <laughs> That's what happens here. when you let go and let God. A puppet comes into your life. <laughs> so, so stay tuned for a puppet show at some time in the future. And thank you all for joining in. And, and I'll be here same time next week, hopefully with um, less technological difficulty. I'm going to do some yeah, troubleshooting it, and right? test Facebook Lives in the meantime. So I get it really how I want it to be. Um, awesome. But thank you all for sticking with me and we'll see you all next week. And thank you so much, Dina, for sharing your perspective, your story, your right. journey, etc. And it's been lovely chatting with you. Lovely talking to you too. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye for now.